Hey there, Matt here again, and thanks for joining me for another video. I've got Joseph Price from Soxie Guitars with me. G'day, Matt. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. And we're going to talk about neck shapes and for players, um, how to choose the right neck shape that suits their playing style. Sure, yeah. It's a really critical part of buying a guitar. Um, the neck and the feel of the neck for the players, the heart and soul. Mm. I've done it, you've done it. We bought a guitar purely because the neck felt great. Mm. Um, I've done it, I suspect you might have done. We bought a guitar because it looked amazing or it had a great sound. And we didn't really love the neck, but we figured it would grow on us, you know, over time and six months later, you're trying to love it, but, but you just don't. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really important to get the shape that works for you. So I thought I'd try and explain some of the terminology that you sometimes read about online for different letter shapes and what that means. Okay, well, what I've got with me is one of my own maple neck blanks. Um, I'll show it to this camera here, and you can see it up there. And what I've done is to actually put a piece of tape down the middle so that we can divide the neck into three equal parts. And when a luthier shapes a neck, they tend to think of it in these three parts of, this is the front to back depth, how thick the neck is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of straps necks, especially modern necks, are about 22 and a half millimeters thick at the first fret. And they'll go to about 23 or 23 and a half millimeters thick at the 12th fret. But the thickness doesn't affect the feel in the hand as much as the shape, the contour of the back of the neck. Yeah. So a classic Gibson neck shape that we've all tried and loved is the medium C. It's, it's almost perfectly round. It fits in your hand really, really well. Um, if you're looking at fender neck shapes, um, very early on they used a, a V-shaped neck, which means it peaks in the middle. And the shoulders, instead of curving gently, from the fingerboard down to the middle of the neck, it curves away quite rapidly into literally a capital V shape. Um, to put that in comparison, an early fender neck V-shaped is very similar to a Martin V-shaped neck. It's quite deep, whereas something like the Eric Clapton model is referred to as a soft V. It's not quite as quick or as pronounced. Um, if we get into more late 60s L series next, they went to a C shaped neck and that simply resembles the letter C and it doesn't have, the shoulder comes away quickly, but it's not too quick. It, mm -hmm. it fits in the hand relatively well. Mm -hmm. um, a much more modern day neck, which Fender are still using now um, and in its extreme example, Ibanez and Jackson popularized what's called the D shaped neck. It's actually a, a, a neck shape which is taken from a classical guitar, which is where the shoulders literally come almost vertically out and then come over. And it really facilitates the idea of instead of the thumb being over the neck, the thumb can be on the, the back of the neck for faster legato playing. So if you tend to play uh, either very fast or of a legato style, and you feel like you need a speedy neck, a lot of guys like that D-shaped neck, right. you know? Mm. So when you're looking to choose your neck, it's important to try and combine the shape of the neck also with the radius, which is the camber left to right of the fretboard. Mm. But it's something to think about is to try and ascertain, do you like a C-shaped neck? Do you like a soft V? Or do you like a D-shaped neck? And there's plenty of other information out on the net on uh, how to have a look at those. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for all that information and for uh, providing it to the viewers. I hope you found that informative. I did. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to subscribe, we'll have some more videos coming up very soon. Thanks.